In this video, I'll show you how you can create nice trigonometric graphs in Desmos so they don't look like this and instead they can look like this. If you're new here, my name is Olivier and I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who is currently doing a master's in statistics at Carleton University. If you type f of x equals sine of x, this is what you see. This is not what you'd expect, especially when you're trying to graph this in degrees. For me, it wasn't until I watched the one minute video that you're going to see up here in the top right corner of the screen that everything clicked. Being able to create nice trig graphs for any student or teacher after grade 10 is a huge advantage. So I hope you can benefit from this video. The first thing to notice here is if we're trying to graph this thing in degrees is that by default, Desmos is in radians. So all we do is we switch it to degrees. Now this makes it super difficult to see that it is a, a sine curve, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to extend the X to see, I put it at 400 because the period of a sine curve is 360. So the typical graph that we do here is from zero to 360. So I'm going to go minus 20 just so we see it more clearly. We can reduce the Y range to let's say 1.5 and negative 1.5 to 1.5, something like this. From here, we can make steps of 90. For the Y, we can do steps of one because that's the amplitude of our curve here. And we can remove the minor grid line so it looks better. We could also remove the grid entirely depending on what you like. I'll keep the grid for now and we can rename the axis. So on the X axis, that would be the angle. We can just keep it X and F of X, depending on what you like. That, that would look decent. I'll put the angle, so angle in degrees, just to keep in mind that we're around the unit circle and we're kind of working with triangles and angles here. Next, we can add arrows to our graph. So I'll just put it pointing in two directions and that looks pretty good already. The last technical thing we're going to do here is we're going to restrict the domain of our function. So to restrict the domain, we open a curly bracket, zero inequality, and X is going to be greater than zero. So you see how there's no blue on the left side of zero. And we also want it to be less than 360 because we just want the first time around the circle or the first period of the sine curve. And if you want, I can show you how to do all the classic trig functions. So g of x would be equal to cosine of x. You see how this is the same thing here. I can just copy paste the domain restrictions to make it look better. And now that I think about it, we can also do projector mode when you're presenting and that might make it look better for students. Lastly, we're just gonna do tan here. So tan, let's call it h of x is equal to 10 of x and let's copy paste the domain. So in purple, we have 10. If you want to remove these curves, you can just click on them like such. We could put them inside a folder, but I don't think there's a need here. I'll just title this nice trig graph degrees. I'll replace what I already have. You can call it whatever you want and that way you can share it with your friends. So you're going to see the link in the description below, but you could also share this picture. So you see how this is a very nice picture of a graph and you could even make it nicer. If you want, you can play around with different, different size of pictures. And now we're going to just recreate the same thing, but this time in radians. The key to creating nice trig graphs in Desmos is really to convert the X axis into pies and stuff. Cause right now it is by default in radians, but 6.28, it's not obvious what's going on. And usually we like to use the pi notation. If you recall, the period of our sine curve in degrees was 360. And in radians, that would be two pi. Pi is 180 degrees. Therefore, if we want to do steps of 90, that would be, we go from degrees to radians. So we would multiply by pi and divide by 180. So we have 90 times pi divided by 180, the 90 and the 180 simplify to one half. So really we have pi over two. To write pi in Desmos, we just write P, I. And you see how it does pi by itself. And now I want 
pi divided by 2. But that's, I put it accidentally on the y. That's not what we want. We want it on the x. So now our, this is 90 pi by 2. And that's what we wanted. We have some nice steps here. Again, we can customize the axes so they look a little better. So let's put negative 1.5 and positive 1.5. On the x, we can do something like negative 1 and 7. That would give us the first wave of the cycle. We can put arrows, rename the axes. This time it's in radians. We can clip projector mode and we can restrict the domain. If we put zero X, but now this time we don't write 360 because if we do write 360, it's 360 radians. So it's going to extend for a while. So what we need to write is 6.28. But again, that's not the exact number. So what we would write is 2 pi P I. So we have the exact restricted domain. I can close my squiggly bracket. If I want to write the cosine curve, I can just do G of X, but this time instead of X, I'll write theta because it is an angle and theta is usually what we write for angles. So I just write T H E T A. I get theta and then cos of X, but again, it's theta and you see how it is the right curve here. That's the cosine curve. Why doesn't the, the domain work? Well, it's because we have X and theta. So this isn't a function of X. So I need to write theta. We could do the same thing for 10 here, but what I'll show you is the other trig functions that might be useful. So you can go in the keyboard, click function. You could write 10 of X, for example, and you see it up here. The other thing you might want is the reciprocal functions. So if we get rid of the other two, and for example, I put cosecant, which is one over sine. Well, I see that this thing has vertical asymptotes whenever sine is zero, because one divided by zero is undefined. One divided by zero gives you error in your calculator because this is one over sine. So when sine is pi, you get zero. The other cool functions that you might like is the inverse. So that would be arc sine, for example, you might like this one and that it looks something like this and try to understand why it works that way. Right. And then you also have the hyperbolic trigonometric functions, which are also cool to know. I'll just finish polishing up this graph on my own. And again, I'll share the link in the description below. And that's really it for trig functions in Desmos. If you've enjoyed this video, you're probably going to enjoy the other videos appearing in the Desmos playlist appearing on the screen. The best way to support the channel at this moment is simply to watch the videos and share them with your friends if you think they're going to be interested. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with Do The Work.